This is almost up to where I was before. Six, go ahead and take a seat. We'll be getting started soon. <clears throat> All right, everyone. The king tells me he's ready for us. Zen, display priority consortium signal, authorization code 7383 Alpha. 7383 Alpha, accepted. Now connecting, consortium king. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> so let's hear it then. Why us? Stormbird or Tiamat should be given this one. We're in no condition to be handling a mission like this. Elana, let him talk. Rook 25, I can only ask that you be patient. And trust me, you should also know that I have personally reviewed all of your CMC records, with nothing of note found. And I am told X03 is in effect. Hmm. So nobody with the CMC is involved. I have reviewed every one, double-checked security protocols, even ran tests to ensure the stability of the CMC network. Everything is correct and in order. I'm probably showing my ignorance here, but uh, <clears throat> what is X03? Executive Order 3. It is an emergency command only utilized when a knight loses control of his or her personnel and is making an emergency landing because of it. It has never been used in 10 years of consortium operations. <laughs> That's probably because no pawns ever cracked a fruity on us before. Or been murdered. Or been shot by bullets fired from a pre-war F-35. So XO3 ends in an emergency landing? Unfortunately, that part of the order will have to wait. Okay, well, if you need us, then let's get to it. So, the bishop is in. And the king has never steered us wrong before. Okay, let's hear the plan. Good. We don't have any time to waste. Now, before I get into the details of this operation, I've decided to bring in another rook to remotely aid you. Not only can his political knowledge be helpful, but he also has personal ties with what is occurring in London. One, One moment. moment. Some, Some of you already know Rook 3. James Lensworth! Uh, sorry, Rook 3. <laughs> what a wonderful surprise! I thought you'd been abducted. I haven't heard a word in months. Hello, Taryn. Certainly been a while. Things have been pretty crazy up here lately. Disarming Strawman and Global was a real bitch of a job. I've been meaning to connect. Are you all right? What is going on? I'm fine. One minute I'm T.O. in my quarters, and the next I'm being dragged here by my assistant. Jim, you pencil-pushing bastard. <laughs> you know you still owe me a drink. Wade, you crazy bastard. I can't believe they keep giving you the keys to that bucket. <laughs> here, let me introduce you to our savior of the day, Bishop Six. He took down Angelov, survived an assassination attempt, and is all around a pretty great guy. Bishop, I still don't know what in the pits is going on, but it sounds like you saved some lives. There's a lot of goddamn good people on that plane, so nice work. Hell of a first day. I'm just gonna go with what I did before. Sure sounds like you've had, uh... Sure sounds like you've got some history with this crew. Yeah, Terran and I go way back. And I was on that crew for a time when Zenlil was first commissioned. Yes, he was. Rook 3 here was once an integral part of this crew. What happened that made you leave? <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> well, hello there, Alana. I knew you couldn't keep from running your motor much longer. <laughs> ah, <clears throat> So, uh, Jim, how's Darcy been anyway? Last I heard she was over in China, managing a plant for the Global Senate. She's fine, thanks. I haven't seen her in a while, but she's actually been living in London for the past year or so. Doing well for herself. Oh, bugger. I'm... I'm sorry. What? What's going on? How long have you been sleeping? I don't know, five, maybe six hours. Why? 
Somebody better tell me something. I will explain. Please, we are running low on time. The Churchill Tower, built over the River Thames, near the financial district of London, England. Oh, God. Did the damn thing blow up? No, Rook 3. From what we can so far ascertain, your daughter Darcy and the other hostages have been unharmed. Hostages? Is this some kind of bad joke? I know my birthday is coming up again. No, no joke. joke. Not like last year. I will explain everything. Now, as I was saying, the Churchill Tower is the second tallest building in the world, standing at 840 meters and consisting of 208 floors, including those below ground. The top 43 floors are in mid-construction and will soon be a five-star hotel. A partially constructed roof will thus supply several safe landing zones for our bishop to aim for. No offense to anyone present, but I'd like to request Bishop 10 for this mission. He'd get my dossier out of that nuke and waiting without breaking a sweat. Bishop 6 will get her back, Rook 3. I can promise you that. Uh-huh. If you say so. Hmm. <laughs> Just breathe, Seeker. Breathe. I'm gonna be super egotistical. I've completed more difficult missions in my sleep. You ain't sleeping no more, Bishop. I hope Terran isn't tolerating that sort of cocky bullshit from our people. <laughs> Bite your tongue, Rook Three. You are not his commanding officer, and I, for one, appreciate the confidence. What we are mostly concerned with is what lies between the hotel and the businesses below. A currently unknown number of armed soldiers have seized this section of the building the Churchill Tower Power Facility, specifically where Rook 3's daughter, Darcy Lensworth, is employed. British authorities have given us control of the situation, and we've been asked to handle things as swiftly as possible. Sir, the news wire says these so-called terrorists are led by Saad bin Laden. How is that possible? Clearly, American intelligence over the death of bin Laden was incorrect. Someone is luring us, and we're playing right into it like a bunch of amateurs. It's Bishop 2 all over again. Unless you have something useful to add, Alana, please be quiet. I'll say nothing? I'm gonna say nothing. Voice and image analysis have confirmed that their leader is in fact Osama bin Laden's son. Here is his statement of their demands, as passed to us by British authorities. I'll let it speak for itself. Allahu Akbar wal Azzatulillah. Lakat Ursilna Nahnu Huna fi Muhimma Jihadiya Mukaddasa. Luwada Haddin Lil Khiana Wal Khida Aladi Yumarisahu al Gharb ala Shaubana. فقد وصلتنا بحمد الله وعونه معلومات عن نظام إيصال للسلاح الكيميائي في إكس واي الذي يتم تطويره على منشآت مبنية فوق أراضينا نحن لقتل ملايين المسلمين حتى على الرغم من توقيع اتحاد أمريكا الشمالية على معاهدة حظر أسلحة الدبار الشامل المجموعة التي تم القبض عليها هم مهندسو وفنيي هذا المشروع الاستعماري للاتحاد وهم شركاء في الجريمة أيضا اتبعوا تعليماتنا ونفذوا طلبنا لنفرج عنهم وإن تجاهلتم طلباتنا سوف نضيقهم غضب الله الشديد الله أكبر Wow A VXY delivery system A holy crusade NAU conspiracies Are suffering the wrath of God and when did people start becoming infidels again? For all intent and purpose, Bin Laden and the men fighting for him should not exist. We also have no idea why they believe a VXY delivery system is being developed on site, and this makes them highly dangerous. Clearly, disinformation is involved. But the threat is real. So, if it's not a weapon, can we assume someone else let them into the tower for another reason? to Luris would be my first guess. 
Maybe. These sons of bitches are just stupid and have bad information. I'm only exploring all possibilities. It sounds to me like you're only running your mouth and clouding the issue. You know what, Rook 3? I don't like you. Leave her alone, you douchebag. Mind your own business, kid. Kay, look. I'm not about to take this bureaucrat's high-handed garbage for an entire mission. Relax, Boyle. Alana, you need to accept the situation and let us move forward. Right. Now. I'm... I'm sorry. Again. I guess I haven't exactly been looking forward to this visit with my dad. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about that anymore, do I? Oh, you're making me cry. Alana, don't. Just don't. Thank you, Night 15. British police, of course, have been explaining to this Bin Laden how ridiculous his claim is. To no avail. It, it is time for action. Bishop, I know this is your first real mission, but I want the terrorists subdued and the hostages rescued by the numbers. This means following your knight's instructions to the letter. God, I can't wait to explore some of these alternative auctions, uh, auctions, alternative actions like, I'm not touching this one, you're all insane. I'm so going to try that at some point, but for now, I'm on it to the letter. I'm glad to hear that. It's all right, Seeker. I think you'll find yourself a natural at this. Just keep your head down and avoid getting shot in the head. Night 15. I will leave the remaining details in your capable hands. Good luck, everyone. And I've got some catching up to do. I'll see y'all at Mission Star. All right. So, we've only got a few minutes till drop time. Rooks, I want you to start prepping by studying schematics and all the other background data that's been supplied to us. I'll be in my office doing the same. Uh, boss? Uh, Kirill is awake and he's asking for the bishop. Well, he, he's actually having a bit of a fit. Bishop, maybe before you head over to the hangar bay, you could go and speak to him in the brig. You may as well see what you can find out. Just make sure you have enough time to gear up in the hangar bay before it's time to jump. Of course. Look, that text again. Vul like, vulnerary. What the hell is that, and why is it popping up? It's like something's trying to communicate to me. I don't think it's the game. I mean, I don't think it's the game in reality. It might be the game within the game, if you know ah, what I mean. It's about time you showed up. Well, there's no Patricia to talk to, because she's dead. So you know where I'm really from? Where you are. From? I know you are a tree-hugging Canadian. Why does this matter? <laughs> Wait, so then what did you mean, I'm not one of them? Let's not keep playing games. You have bested me, and I am at your mercy. But does your crew know of your bizarre brand of treachery? How you first helped me, only later to defeat me? What, what is he what? talking about? What what the hell is he talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. I had a feeling you might say that. Three times this morning, I spoke with you, Bishop Six. What? You are who initiated Phase One. And you also told me to blame Rook Thirteen if the chance arose. I assume you were testing my resolve. And so, I played along. He had better be messing around. Alana, stay out of this. I mean it. He's attempting to turn us against each other, hoping we'll believe anything after today. Maybe. Baker. Well, I couldn't have told you about Pawn Seven. How did you know she was? How did you know he was dead? No. My other contact is the one who told me about Pawn Seven through another coded CMC transmission. One of your crew has been updating me on mission details for weeks. Whereas you only started talking to me this morning. Except you claim you did not speak to me. Seeker. 
I did not. Now, can you prove this contact of yours came from a CMC? Ha. Huh. From in here? No. And since my headquarters is now being torn to shreds, I believe you'll have to trust me. I have people who know people, and they figured out how to detect the CMC network. Hmm. Uh-huh. The story's getting thin quickly. I was waiting for you to say that. I do not need to prove myself to you or your knight. This has been a lovely chat. But with your CMC on, it becomes dangerous for me. Perhaps we can meet when you are off duty. I know a great steakhouse if you're ever near Varna. Now, I believe you have a mission to prepare for. Unbelief. That man never ceases to amaze me. He actually thinks he is going to get out of this. Anyway, like he said, go and prep in the hangar bay. I... Honestly don't know if anything he said had any truth to it, or if he was just trying to fuck with my mind. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'll go prepare for the mission in just a second. I'll be right back. All right. Let's get suited up. It's all set to go. Just plug yourself in here and stock up. Once you choose, there's no going back until you return to Zenlin. Oh, and make sure to grab a free fall suit, or you're not going anywhere. So, Bishop. Once you're sure you have what you want, let me know, and we'll get you off this boat. Alright, that's a free fall suit, right? Wait, no, that's not. No, that's a free fall suit. There we go. Alright, got my thingy, got my helmet. Cool, cool. Um, I don't need these chips anymore. This is my... Hmm. Personal containment unit storage. So this is not my storage container. Huh. If that's not my storage container, where is it then? Is it just like strapped to my belt? Anyway, I'll just leave it there. So, can I put, like, a battle suit in my storage? Probably not. No. Right, well, I can take these things if I want to. But I don't actually have the suit to use it. Maybe I'll end up finding a suit. But... Well, I guess I can always get rid of them, right? No, I can't take any more. All right, whatever, that's good. I think I am good to go. Yeah. Okay, here begins the freefall sequence, which is the sequence that I got stuck on and had to quit the game on. Let's hope it goes better this time. So, are you ready yet? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, sir. He's stocked up and ready to break heads. We're already in a circling pattern around the Churchill Tower. Open the hangar bay door and wait for Wade's order. Bishop, be careful. I'm before you get shot. Do not wish to see you in the med bay once this is over. We're in position. Holding just above most of the turbulence from the storm. I should be able to keep it steady for your jump. Okay. Time to jump. All right. <laughs> attention for a minute. 
I wanted to say a few quick words before we get down to business. Oh, it's speech time again. <laughs> yes, Wade, it is. There is no question that we have all been put to the ultimate test today. And in my mind, we have so far succeeded brilliantly. The King is asking for our blind trust and patience with this Churchill Tower debacle. And I, for one, am ready to give it to him. Now, what has happened with Pawn 32 is not something to be taken lightly. And the threat of another traitor is very real. The fact someone as seemingly dedicated as Patricia could do such a thing tells me that what we are up against is something beyond the scope of government or any normal body of power. I believe the king when he says that we are in for the fight of our lives. Almost Christmas. Our children are eagerly awaiting the Seeker's arrival. Throughout most of the UK, there will be all officers to mission operations, followed by 20 centimeters of snow. Here at home, we're facing one hell of a storm front. One more. Early this morning at the port of Livingston, 21 workers were found dead in a cargo container ship. The ship had initiated auto docking procedures, and emergency personnel on site reported it's finding no survivors. Quantum signal destabilizing. 21 one, one, one. dead. Nothing further, including cause of death and origin Lights. of the vessel, had been released. Much by better. Authorities. Not so sorry to and wake you, Bishop. That's from here in London. We thought you should know I'm about Malcolm our little Thomas. escort. Wait, haven't we done this already? You guys see that? Ah, that one was a little close. But you have nothing to worry about. We'll run a full body scan, just to be sure. Okay. Now what the hell was that? Two near hits in a row. I'm running a diagnostic. Okay, this is the one that always bugged out for me. Please work now. Yes, I can talk to him. Oh, thank the gods, it's working. Kirill, I love you. I could kiss you right now. Mm -hmm. Come here, you bearded piece of shit. Now that we are, well, mostly alone, I wanted to speak with you, man to man. This whole ordeal has made me very curious about you. Wait, but I already beat you. You should be in the brig. That was not a random strike. The bishop's vitals are fluctuating. Oh my god. His suit. Well now. Who the hell are you? Hello, Karen. Just sit down and don't get in my way. I'm here for him, not you. Why don't you show us the traitor behind that voice? Take the helmet off. I don't want to hurt you. This is a different version of what happened. Shut up and sit down. I'm detecting conductive elements in the bishop's freefall suit. Car 32 must have reprogrammed the damn CCU output. Oh, shit. Just hang in there. I'm not about to lose you after everything we've been through today. Error. Quantum paradox in progress. That doesn't sound good. Paradoxes are not good. So, are you ready? Quantum limbo. Can I move? I can move. There's something over there. Whoa, what is that? That's like where I came in. There's a symbol over there, and that's like where I came in originally. Let's go to the symbol. Is that another one? Whoa. What the hell? I hope these reestablish the connection.
Automatic stream save completed. Okay, where am I? Virtual civilian. Hi. Hello. Oh Christ, can you really see me? Yes, I can see you. Oh, thank you. I was on my way to meet a friend I met while working in Mexico. I, uh, I live in San Antonio with my wife and daughter. One minute I was in my car, and the next, the next, well, I woke up here, surrounded by all this whiteness. And why am I blue? <laughs> I'm wondering the same thing. Uh... What kind- what sort of work did you do in Mexico, Blue Man? I was a foreman for a worldview industries project just outside Jalapa. We were expanding on an old underground bunker, turning it into a workspace for some kind of supercomputer. They didn't tell me anything else, and I don't know any more than that. Now, what is going on? It could be we're in a consortium virtual trainer. We are... in a training program? And what consortium are you referring to? And how come I don't need to breathe anymore? And well... Where the hell did my boss go? And the stupid tie? You see this tie I have on? I can't take the damn thing off! Um... <laughs> uh, you don't know about the consortium. What year do you think it is? It was February the 28th, 2027 before I woke up here. I was driving my own car, one of the first model Teslas. I remember thinking how much I'd missed driving her after so long in Jalapa. I... I don't remember what happened after that. I must have been kidnapped. Maybe I've been drugged and this is all in my head. Twenty twenty seven. But the king didn't exist in twenty twenty seven. I wish I knew what the hell you're talking about. I really do. Wait, I never got your name. I am partly Bishop Six. My name is John Wilkinson. I am a contract construction foreman working mostly for Worldview Industries. So are you here to get me out of this place or not? As in JohnWilkinson.com? I've heard of you! Actually, I haven't. You have heard of me? Because of my surfing website? Um, because K1 and the Guardian Church told me about you. Yeah, that's right. K1 is the supercomputer we were building for. But the Guardian Church? I barely know anything about them, and don't plan to start. You must have the wrong guy. Death brought him here and death will set him free. Leave him death behind and forever here? here he will remain. Wait, the choice is my yours. Death? But I'm not dead. What the fuck? Think hard. What is the last thing you remember before coming here? I was I was coming to an intersection. It was a four-way stop by my house. Yeah. I remember glancing at my rearview mirror and seeing one of those driverless trucks coming at me. Oh shit! It must have been going 70 miles an hour when it hit me! He died. Take it easy. Breathe. What happened next? The next thing I remember, I was being dragged from the car. There was people all around me. One of them was saying how they only had an hour. An hour to get me back up to the lab. He also said a name. What was the name? Oh, come on! Fernandez, that's it. He said Fernandez was going to be pissed if they screwed up. <sighs> then I woke up here. JohnWilkinson.com says you died in an ADV accident. Right. This non-surfing website of yours. Well, I did not die in an accident. I mean, I'm not dead. I couldn't feel my limbs. My vision was blurred, with blood. But I survived. Those people did something to me. 
They brought me here, and apparently only you can set me free. So what's it going to be? You have the weapons, and I won't be killing myself any time soon. Um... Will you set me free or leave me here forever in this horrible blue suit? Uh... Do I have the weapon? It is okay. I oh. want you to kill me. Do it! If that writing is correct, I do not want to stay here forever. If that writing is correct, I don't... Whoever you are, you have a choice to make. Now! Okay, when faced with a situation where I don't know what the fuck is going on, my actions are not going to be to shoot someone. I'm leaving. Wait! No. I don't know what the hell just happened. I'm back in quantum limbo. Okay, so am I returning, am I resuming my connection or am I going backwards and disconnecting? May I speak to you for a moment? What? Carol? That's Carol's voice. Yeah, I'm disconnecting. Is that the end? Or at least one of the ends? To be continued in Consortium 2, the Churchill debacle. Debacle. This is only the beginning. All paths lead to this inevitable conclusion. Bishop Sixth must jump from Zenlil, and it must also be wearing the sabotaged freefall suit, which ends up disrupting our connection and possibly even killing him. This is an unfortunate yet unavoidable outcome, but there is still hope. It is first important to remember that everything you've had Bishop Six do or say and the repercussions of those actions should be seen as neither good nor bad. Your personalized universe is simply a reflection of your choices, actions, and inactions. We here at IDGI believe all ways of progressing through the experience are viable and acceptable. Let's recap some of the major choices you've made for Bishop Six in this particular universe. Kirill Angelov and his homeless mercenaries showed up and you managed to keep Angelov calm enough to allow Night 15's deception. During the homeless mercenary encounter, Pawn 1 was nearly killed by experimental weapon fire. You saved his life just in time using medical nanite technology. You told Rook 13 that you are a member of the Guardian Church. You saved Rook 9 when he was nearly killed in lower avionics, presumably by the virus. Because you convinced him of the virus, Wade immediately agreed to find and help clean it out. At the meeting with the Queen, you also met Knight 18 of the Stormbird. He seemed to know something about who you really are, but to what end? On your way to the Virtual Trainer, Pawn64 approached you and pleaded for a minute of your time. You agreed and he proceeded to tell you about calls to Bulgaria being made for the Medical Bay over the past month. The air was then let out from the cabin and the door locked down, presumably by the virus. Thanks to you saving Wade in lower avionics previously, he was able to concentrate and crack the virus to save Pawn 64's life. You met John Wilkinson. Against his wishes, you chose not to kill him and instead left him there forever. Rook25 asked you who she should keep an eye on as potentially Pawn 7's murderer. You guessed. Right. Because of the incident with Pawn 64, you were forced to meet Knight 15 in her office. You confronted Pawn 32, and after a short discussion, she committed suicide with a disintegration grenade. Angelov blamed the real Bishop Six in the consortium for setting everything up. He said the king is playing games. You voluntarily jumped from Zenlil, and Bishop Six was possibly killed in the process. Someone may have sabotaged his freefall suit.
Regarding the IDGI-1 anomaly, we refer to as the lightning jumps, which you've just experienced. Though skewered by a confused IDGI-1, each strike allowed you to momentarily perceive past, perceive past events from your experience, or even experience alternate possible past events. We are most interested in the final jump into the hangar bay. We are working on turning that jump into the start of a new universe, allowing you to warn Rook-25 of the sabotage freefall suit in time to change the outcome, and ultimately save the bishop. Until then, we highly encourage you to start a new universe and go another round. We know there's much more to be learned through performing different actions and making different choices. When it comes to this other world, knowledge is power. Vidal Desert Desert how do you pronounce the name? Inventor of the IDGI one satellite. <laughs> oh boy. That is one hell of a cliffhanger. Kind of literally, not literally, since I didn't fall off a cliff, but I did jump. So more of a playing hanger? A a plane hanger? If you consider falling in midair hanging, which it's not. It is a cliffhanger, just not literally in any way. So yes, it appears that uh, you can't stop that from happening, but everything up to it, you can change. Or at least a lot of the things you can change. Alright, well, definitely... I don't know if I'm going to do this right away. I probably won't, but pretty soon. I definitely want to do at least one more playthrough. Now that I've actually finished the game, I'm going to go in the Steam forums, I'm going to read what the developers have said, I'm going to read different people's interpretations, and I'm going to come back and do a different playthrough with very different options. Yeah, definitely. Because your actions really do affect the story, and they're obviously going to infect, uh, affect the next part of the story as well. Consortium 2, the Churchill debacle. So that's going to be interesting to see. <laughs> Thank you for playing our game and getting this far through the credits. Oh, cute doggy. I wonder if there's any scenes after the credits. Hmm. I think it's almost over, so I guess I'll let it play out. But, yes, like usual, I'd like to examine the games that I play after finishing them, so I'm about to do that. But first, since it's about to end, I want to know if there's any scenes after the credits, or any special things. So let's see. I love the fact that Interdimensional Games is both an actual game studio that made this literal game, and also a, an actual company within the game universe. They've integrated themselves into it. Very cool. Alright, let's see if anything happens. Guessing I probably have to close it. Nope, okay. Alright, well, let's discuss it a bit. Well, I am... very happy to see that they've patched it up to a state where it's... really solid. There were some issues, but they were thankfully fairly minor. The most significant one was when I went to talk to Kirill, he was shooting at Annette Durand for some reason. And if I dared to get in front of him, he started shooting me, and everybody started shooting me, which is freaking bizarre. I don't know what was up with that, but... I just started talking to him, and then everything fixed itself, so that wasn't that, uh, you know, wasn't a showstopper. And I think that was the only major bug I encountered. All the others were just, you know, minor quirks. This game can certainly use some more polish in many areas, but it's a really solid game now. Which is nice to see, because before, again, it was completely broken to the point where I had to stop my playthrough because I just could not keep going. But they fixed it up, and they did it very quickly, in only a couple weeks. Which is really nice to see. So again, just to talk about that briefly. They, you know, they're, they're a small studio. Their Kickstarter was successful, but they're not exactly rich by any means. And Q&A, or uh, not Q&A, QA, quality assurance, is difficult, especially when you don't have that many resources. They said they tried to test it as much as they can, 
and they thought it was pretty much bug free. They thought it was, you know, in a good condition when they released it, but then they found out once it was played on a bunch of different people's configurations that it actually wasn't. It's a very unfortunate situation. They thought they were releasing a solid product, but it turns out they're releasing, frankly, what was a very, very buggy mess. Now, I don't want to apologize for them too much. I mean, they did release a product that was very broken to the point of being unplayable for many people, including me. But I'm okay with that, given the situation, given that they're a small indie studio who did their best, and this is their first game, and as soon as realizing that, they immediately apologized and got working very, very fast on fixing it. And they pulled it off. They said they're going to fix it. They said they're going to fix it really fast. Uh, they're expecting it to be done by the end of January, but they actually got it done a week or two sooner. And fixed all the major bugs, from what I can see, in just a couple weeks. So I can respect that. It was frustrating that it was broken, but I can respect that, and it's not that big of a deal to me. What I'm really, actually, what I'm more worried about with that whole technical issue thing is that it might have caused a lot of people to look away from the game. Like, I'm wondering if that's going to seriously hurt their sales. Because around the time of release is when you have a lot of press. It's when, it's when you have reviews come out. And, you know, people are talking about the game a lot is when it first comes out. And I'm worried that that happened. And people went to take a look at it. They saw it was buggy, and then maybe they're never going to really look at it again. Maybe it's just going to fall by the wayside and they're going to forget about it. As the one game that was buggy and they forgot to check on again. I'm really hoping that's not going to happen because this is a very special game. And it would be such a shame if it doesn't do well, because it really deserves to do well. So that's my biggest worry about how buggy it was released in. It's just that it might hurt their success a lot. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, overall impressions of the game, damn good. I'm really impressed. I came into this just fascinated by it. When I first, you know, when I gave... When I, uh gave money to the Kickstarters because it was such a fascinating project. It's like this adventure, game, interactive, sci-fi, drama, you know, it's just, it's a bunch of different genres and it's involves a very detailed story and characters, which is something that I really like in games and they perfectly, perfectly freaking nailed all of those things. I mean, this is a very character-driven game. Very character driven. It's got a I guess, I guess you even say an ensemble cast. I'm not sure if that can really apply to games, but yes, it's got a large cast and all of them are pretty damn important for the most part. You know, they are most of what makes the universe and the the aircraft that you're in alive. It's the characters. They are most of the game. It's interacting with the characters. Playing in this detective mystery and trying to talk to people and figure things out and your relationship with these different people. That is probably the core of the game, I would say, to me. I guess, I don't know. You could say, I guess, that the story... Maybe you could say it's more plot-driven because of the story with connecting to Bishop Six and your relationship with the King. Maybe that's the core, but at least for this game, I think the characters were the core, because that's most of what you're interacting with. Is with the characters, not with the not really with the main plot so much. So yeah, I'd say it's character driven, I think. I don't know, whatever, it's just a it's just a word. Whether it is or not doesn't really change what actually is. I mean whether the word fits or not doesn't change what actually is in reality. It's just a label. So, moving on from that. Again, the characters were absolutely core. So, how well they were realized is extremely important. And again, they've nailed it. So, a very important part of characters is being well written. And, boy, are they. I don't think a single line stood out to me as being anything less than really good. Which is something that is unfortunately very rare in games. Having good writing in games is not very common. It's to the point where it, I think I almost celebrate a game that even has decent writing. You know, sometimes there's games where it's, I think, 
it's not that good, but at least they tried. It's kind of like a pat on the back sort of thing, like, good job, you tried. Which a lot of games don't even really. But in this case, it is just simply well written, not for a game, it's just simply well written. Which is wonderful to see. I mean, it's got a very large cast of characters. All of which have depth to them. You know, some more so, some less so. Some, like, the coffee guy. <laughs> Not so much. But that's okay, they don't all need to be super detailed. But they're all really well realized. With serious depth to them. It's not just a bunch of boring people. You have a serious, diverse cast of people. All sorts of different, uh... Just all sorts of differences between them, you know? Completely different accents, born in completely different places. Men, women, young, older. Just a really well-realized cast of characters. And that was wonderful. And the voice acting. I don't want to understate how good the voice acting is. Now, when it comes to indie productions and voice acting, it's... Well, it's a, I think it's especially hard to get... Well, voice acting is... Okay, voice acting is kind of expensive. It is pretty damn expensive. And it's kind of hard to do. That's why some games don't even have voice acting. You know, that's why they decided not to go with voice acting you know, for the most part, for Wasteland 2. It's because the expense, you know, they determined the expense of getting all the voice actors for the parts is not worth it. Because they can make so much more content if it's just text. Voice acting is expensive. It's time consuming, it's expensive, it means your dialogue needs to be locked down long before. It would have to be if it was text only, because you could, you know, if it's text only, you can change it at the very last minute. If it's voices, you have to, you know, rebook an actor and re-record lines, and that costs money and a lot of time. It's difficult. So it's no wonder that a lot of indie productions either don't have voice acting, or maybe don't have the greatest. It's not super common. So to see such a, uh, a game with, with such a relatively low budget, and such a large cast of characters, have voice acting that is universally great, is pretty, is really, really impressive. I wouldn't be too surprised if it was a small cast of characters that had really good voice acting, or a large cast of characters that had okay voice acting, but the fact that it's a huge cast of characters that has great voice acting is very impressive. Really, hats off to the... well, to the developers for picking the right voice actors, and to the voice actors for doing a damn good job, because they brought the characters to life. Great, great voice acting. Some of the best I've ever heard. Just damn good. Majorly impressed with that. What else is there to talk about? There's gotta be a lot more. Oh yes, I'm also incredibly impressed with the amount of depth in and around the game. I say around because there's a lot of depth even outside of it. Such as the alternate reality game, which you can play on their website. And information you get from playing the game and information from inside of the information console in the game. There's just, there's an incredible amount of mystery about this game. It doesn't feel self-contained. It feels like there's so much more under the surface. In it and around it. And like I said before, I've just barely scratched the surface. I wanted to play through the game fully before kind of delving deep into it. A big reason for that is because I know that if I do delve deep, I'm going to find a lot of spoilers, so I'd like to actually know what happens in the game first so I can't get spoiled. And now I do. But there's so much depth. All of the writing inside of the information console, even though even though most of it I didn't read, I can really appreciate that it's there. I know there's got to be some people out there who are going to read all of it. And I love that it's there for them. And I'm certainly going to read some of it. It's the amount of writing that has gone into this game and the amount of care and attention to detail that's been put into the story is mind-blowing. It's freaking mind-blowing. There's so much more to it. It's not just one game. It feels like there's... 
so much history behind it already, even though this is the only first game to come out. You know, sometimes you feel like that when it's, uh, it's an established series that has been going on for a really long time. You build up a, a backlog of lore and events. I don't think backlog is the right word. You build up a... I'm not sure what the right word is. But, yeah, you have a history of events. You build up all of this lore. But in this case, it feels like that's already in the game, even though this is the first game. It's it's amazing. There's so much here. You know, this is the sort of game that's not just a play it and forget it sort of thing. It's a play it and then think about it because there's a shit done here and then play it a couple more times because you can do a bunch of different stuff. And see things in an entirely new light. It's that sort of game, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. I, let's see, I also love that the fact, uh, the fact that it's sci-fi. It's really nice to see, I like sci-fi. Oh yes. Another good thing to talk about. I like how eerie it is. How it mirrors reality in so many ways. Because it involves, well it involves time travel and travel into an alternate reality. I guess you could say. And they're all different versions of, you know, the universe that we know about. And they're all disturbingly similar to actual reality. It's a, you know, it's an alternative version of future events. These, the wireheads, the kind of technical revolution, virtual reality the resource wars, all of these things disturbingly mimic, well, I shouldn't say mimic, that's not right, disturbingly ring true to things that could actually happen in the real world. And I love that. It's really disturbing. It doesn't feel like some just... You know, sometimes sci-fi universes have a lot of their own events that don't feel very topical or connected. You can't really, like, I don't really connect to it because it's, you know... This race of aliens, the, you know, the Octoglug, are fighting the Bluglugs. You know, some random names. This alien race is fighting that alien race, and who cares? That's how I feel about some sci-fi. But in this case, even though it is science fiction, and it's set, at least kind of, in the future, at least one of the timelines you're playing in is in the future, even though it is, it's still very grounded. Which I suppose is an ironic thing to say about a game that takes place almost entirely inside of a plane, but yes, it's it's very grounded in reality. It doesn't feel like some crazy sci-fi universe that feels silly. It feels like one that could actually very well happen. I'm not so sure about the time traveling and the connecting to someone's body and the massive artificial intelligence. You know, that's that's pretty far-fetched, but a lot of it just feels really, really grounded. Which made the whole thing feel eerie. You know, it wasn't a bit of throwaway silliness in the universe, but actually a, a genuinely well-thought-out and nuanced, I think, look. And exploration of a possible future, or possible futures, for the real world. Which was really cool. Let's see, what else to say? Hmm. Let's talk about the graphic design. Alright, so when I first saw screenshots from this game, I didn't love how it looked. It looked kind of cartoony, which... It's just a taste thing for me. I don't usually like kind of cartoony visuals. So I was a little bit worried about that, but... As always, I can always, I can always overlook graphics. I've played some games that are really ugly, but I just love them for the story, such as To the Moon, for example, is... I gotta be honest, for the most part, it's a really hideous looking game, but it's not really about the graphics. So I can totally overlook it. And I was prepared to do the same thing here. Even if I didn't like the art style, I could just get lost in the characters and the voice acting and whatnot, but it turns out I didn't even have to, because I actually liked the graphic style quite a bit. It is kind of cartoony, it uses a lot of very solid colors. Rather than really detailed textures, there's a lot of smoothness to it. Really smooth well, kind of smooth lighting. And, uh, yeah, just a lot of solid colors and really smooth look to it. Very clean. And it actually worked. Although there, there are definitely some issues with the graphics. 
uh, one of which is the shadows, which I don't think they looked great before, but now since the latest patch when they... I think they halved the shadow resolution to improve performance, and now they look absolutely hideous. They look so bad. It's incredibly distracting to see these massive, chunky, shadowy pixels with no smoothing whatsoever, not a single bit of smoothing. There's no soft shadows here, so they are pretty distracting. Also, maybe I should load it up, actually. Um, let's see. Where's a good place to load? Let's try here. So I can actually demonstrate something about the graphics. It might be a little bit hard to see, especially if you're not in full screen. But let me see if I can show you here. Okay. So, shadows. Probably already seen the shadows. Let me see if I can find a good example of it. So, yeah. These are not good looking shadows. And by not good looking, I mean ridiculously hideous. They look really, really bad. So it's a bit distracting. It's, it's especially distracting because of the nature of the game, because it has such a smooth art style. Where, I mean, look at this. Everything's very smooth colors. You know, kind of just solid colors, solid blue. Nice and smooth. So when you have a game that looks nice and smooth, and then you have an element like shadows that look incredibly jaggy, it's very distracting, and it's, it's kind of like a break in the art style where it just doesn't work. It looks really weird. It mars what is otherwise a very smooth look. And there's one other graphical element that also does the same thing. It really distracts from the smooth look, and that's... Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It kind of seems like a sort of ambient occlusion. It's a little bit hard to demonstrate, because the closer you get, the smaller it gets. But, uh... Here, I'll zoom in. So hopefully I remember to actually edit in the zoom in here, but if you look at that white spirally thing that has a chair on top. If you notice all the black around the rings, and it's not static, it's not like baked in, it seems to be calculated when you move, so let me move a little bit. So if you get closer to it, it gets smaller. Yeah. And it's, it's constantly moving every time you move everywhere. It's like it's some sort of an ambient occlusion thing, I think. But the problem with it is that it's super staticky. See, normally ambient occlusion is very smooth looking, but in this case, it just looks. I'm not sure if dithered is the right word, but it just looks like static. It's super sharp. Which is very much at odds with the otherwise smooth look. And it's especially distracting when you move. Because when you move, it. again, it moves. And since it's not smooth, it doesn't move in a smooth way. It moves in a very strangely... Just a, ver a very sharp, unpleasant look. So that's unfortunate, too. But, uh, yeah, those are, the only, those are the only problems I had with the graphics. Just a weird ambient occlusion sort of thing, or whatever the hell it is. In the shadows. Like, here, here you can really see it. You can see the outline. Around stuff. It does seem to be like some sort of an ambient occlusion, but it looks really bad. It's very strange. To be honest, I wish there was an option to just flat out disable it. I mean, maybe if you turn like the shader quality all the way down. What options are in here? Oh, you, you, yeah, you can't access the video options when you're playing the game. Um. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you turn one of the options all the way down, it would disable that. But I'm guessing it'd probably disable a bunch of other stuff too. Whereas I just wanted, I want to disable just that, and nothing else, because it looks weird. But as far as I know, that is not an option, or at least it's not a clearly labeled one in the options menu. Again, it might be rolled into a different option, but, uh, yeah. But that's it, otherwise it looks really good. Very smooth, for the most part, and, uh, good looking. Also, you know what, since I'm in-game, it's actually good to be in-game here to demonstrate some of the stuff. Yoink! Aw, oh, I'm full. Um, since I'm in-game, I'll show you a little bit about another thing that I like about this game, and that's how detailed the environment is. So a lot of games are all about... Well, they involve exploring new areas constantly. So, you know, it's a, 
It's a common thing to mention on feature lists, you know, features 15 levels, features 20 levels. Because by having new levels, you don't get, you know, you don't get bored. Have new environments to do the same actions over. Especially common to things like, I don't know. Actually, no, never mind. As a stupid line of thought, I'm going to abandon it. Uh, but yes, having a lot of levels is a very common thing and often listed as a feature in games. But in this case, this game practically only has one level. Or one environment. And that's... This vessel. And I really like that they did that. It was not something you... Uh, it's not something I normally get to do in a game. Again, most games in involve a lot of new areas. Oftentimes you'll revisit areas a lot, but you also still keep unlocking new areas. In fact, almost all games are like that, I think. But in this case, there's basically only one area. And what they've done with that is made it extremely detailed. They've made it, they've made it highly interactive. So you can interact with everything from... Hello, Annette. Or Adele, sorry. You can interact with, like, the bathroom. You can close the door, you can lock it. You can flush the toilet. I didn't even realize I could open this. This is a shower. Cool. Can I turn on the water? Unfortunately, I cannot. You can blow on the, you know, turn on the dryer. You can recycle that. Uh, turn on the sink. There's a lot of interactivity. So they've made one environment, basically, that is incredibly detailed. Filled with interactivity and filled with interesting things. So instead of constantly learning a new environment, instead, you're learning more about the same environment, but learning new things about it and new things about the people inside of it. It's a, you know, it's a different way of looking at the environment. No longer, like in an FPS, for example, I might, I might try to scout out the environment to find certain pathways, you know, like, oh, there's somewhere I can take cover, I can get some ammo over there, or something like that. You, know, you need to understand the environment to, uh, better be able to complete the game. But... But in this case, I guess, I don't know, I guess it's kind of similar in that you do need to understand the environment to do certain things, like, you know, to fix it, you need to know where to go to fix it. But it just allows you to get more familiar with an environment. Because you're not changing all the time. You're stuck in one. It allows you to get much more intimate. Fighting Fantasy Anthology. So yeah, I guess that's basically it. It just allows you to get more intimate. And more familiar. With an environment. This, you know, it feels like a real place. It feels like a, a living place. It feels like a place that people live in. Which is nice. It's really cool. Oh god, go away. There we go. Let's see if I can jump all the way up. Whoop. Hello. How are you? Cool. Nice chat. So, yeah. I really like that, too. So as for, let's see, is that all the good things I think I've hit? The, I think it is. At least all the things I can think of. So again, in terms of what can be improved, on the graphical side it'd be the weird ambient occlusion sort of stuff, and the terrible shadows. Uh, these sounds are... how are the sounds? I don't, the sound actually was not a huge element in this game. I mean, the sound quality of the voices is, of course, great. Let's see, the walking sounds, their walking sounds are good. I, I, I don't know, now that I think about it, which I hadn't really thought about it before, I'd say the sound effects are pretty good. Yeah, they are. Doors sound nice, footsteps sound nice. I don't know, there's not a huge amount of interactivity that involves sounds, really. You're not picking up objects and moving them around like it's Gary's Mod or something. Yeah, sounds are decent. Not a huge element of the game, and that's okay. Music's good, although, to be honest, I don't remember hearing it all that much. Also didn't really seem to play a big part. But that's fine. Not a big deal. 
Let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, just, uh, well, fix more bugs. Obviously, that's one thing that could, of course, be improved, and they are working on it. Uh, performance is still relatively bad. See, the thing is, this isn't a game that really relies on Twitch shooting or anything like that, for the most part, unless you go super aggro, I guess, and just... <laughs> it just pisses everyone off and just try to shoot people. Then it might be. But at least for me, not so much. So you don't need a very good FPS to play this game. So it's perfectly playable. However, in terms of what your performance is, given what the game looks like, again, it looks good, but it's not particularly high fidelity in any real way. So it honestly should perform a lot better. I mean, I frequently, very frequently went below 60 FPS. Which is actually really absurd. Given that Metro Last Light, I can run Metro Last Light with consistently better performance than this on max settings. Which is completely absurd. I'm sorry, Metro Last Light has a lot more going on. It's got a lot more fidelity to it. I'm just talking about horsepower here, of course, not art styles. Obviously, this art style, with how smooth it is, is a lot simpler to render than Metro's very gritty and super detailed environments, but... Yeah, in terms of the FPS you get, given the complexity of the scenes, this game is really poorly optimized. But again, it's still playable because you don't need super good performance. So it's not a huge deal. So that could be improved. And various other things, like there's still a lot of glitches with the subtitles not syncing up correctly. Uh, a lot of... oftentimes the subtitles weren't accurate, they didn't sync up correctly, sometimes they duplicated. You know, minor stuff, just little details like that. Still some technical issues. Such as when I went to talk to Kirill and he was shooting at Adele Durand. For some reason. Which, again, was not game-breaking, so it's not that big of a deal, but it was very strange, obviously a bug. So there's definitely still some work to be done. But it's definitely very playable now. It's, it's a solid game. Totally playable. So if you were... If you were waiting for patches to play this game, well, I think you're good to go. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just areas of polish. That can be improved, for the most part. Nothing's really broken, just, just a bit more polish would be nice, such as using the information console. Where, like, it's so strange. The information console doesn't allow you to use spaces. Nor does it allow you to use numbers. Well, okay, never mind. It allows you to use some numbers. One, no. Two, no. Three, no. Four, no. Five, yes. Six, yes. Seven, yes. Eight, yes. Nine, yes. Zero, yes. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe it's because one through four are bound to controls for weapons and inventory and whatnot, but then why would that stop you from typing? I don't know. Uh, no punctuation whatsoever. So, yeah, no space, no periods. It's super, super limited. And to make it even worse, you can't even press enter to search. It's like, I mean, this is supposed to be the future. And I'm using an information console that doesn't allow me to press space, and it doesn't allow me to press enter. I have to type one word in, and press this little button. Like, what the hell? And then it's agonizingly slow to scroll through this with my scroll wheel, so I have to grab this. You know, just... It's just bits of polish like this. This is not a big deal by any means. But just bits of polish like that would be nice. Hmm. So I guess probably the big thing that I haven't talked about is what the hell is going on in the story. I'm running laps, by the way, to help me think better. And the answer is... I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to read a lot of other people's interpretations and ideas. Maybe delve into the console more to really... even get a firm grip on it, I think. Assuming I even can get a firm grip on it, it's possible that... It's just not possible to know until maybe the next game or two come out. Since it is part of a series, after all. Don't know. But I do seem to be the Seeker. I'm part of a game. There is the King. 
and lots and millions and millions of other stuff. Yeah. Wish I could say more about it, but I can't yet. Well, that's pretty much where I'm going to end it. But like I said previously, I'm definitely going to replay this game. I'm going to read about it, and then I'm going to replay it. Not sure how soon. I probably won't do it right away. I don't want to burn myself out by playing it for like 15 hours back to back. But I'm definitely going to replay it with some different options. And hopefully once I come back to it, I'll also know enough more about the story based on what I've read to say something more insightful about the story. In the meantime, I'm just going to hit my head on the ceiling. Because it's fun. Okay, so I hope everyone has enjoyed my playthrough of Consortium. Thank you for watching, and I will be back soon with another playthrough.